Well, I've got three parents waiting to come in, so I'll go ahead and let them in. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back. We're glad you could join us again this evening for our third installment. Hi everybody. I'm glad to see everybody here after we just got back from spring break uh, yesterday. So um, and jumped right back into the work week in school today. So it's been a long day. Um, I'm hoping somebody came with some questions or just something that you'd like to talk about, areas of development, tell me how things are going, something you tried. How are you doing, guys? Um, for me, my biggest struggle, and I, I, I've been quiet these last sessions, but I was said, let me take advantage of Kristen today. <laughs> Um, Lior is 20 month and I, she's, she's perfect. She's amazing, thriving in a lot of things, but feeding is a struggle for us. So, um, I still, I'm still with formula for her. Okay. I'm still with puree baby food. Um, and, and I see her so big and I wish I could kind of just already introduce some table food, okay. but I just can't. Uh, right now, she has her first tooth coming out. So it has taken her forever to get teeth and she just will spit everything out with her tongue. Okay. It, Actually, I was gonna say, great question. Cause I wanted to talk about feeding today too. Yes. I even came prepared with some spoons and things like that. Um, so <laughs> awesome. Um, I'd be happy to talk about that. And if you haven't gotten to feeding, you know, like your child's not old enough yet, this is great because we can talk about ahead of time when and how to introduce foods and we might be able to um, prevent some things from happening um, with our little guys with low tone. But Christy, why don't you start with telling me exactly what's kind of happening um, with Lenore and um, I'll see if I can take a stab at it. So... Right now, I've been reading and kind of getting information about this baby led weaning, mm -hmm. uh, kind of having her kind of touch things. And that's something that she doesn't want to do. She does not want to touch food. Okay. So I don't know. I don't think it's a texture thing or a temperature because everything else she would touch. She's okay. very, ex explores with her hands a lot. Um, so I don't know if it's just the fact that she knows it's food <laughs> and she doesn't want to kind of touch it. So she will not touch it. So I try to kind of like just put it close to her for her to grab it. She won't grab it. And if I try to introduce it to her mouth, she will kind of some lick it. Some things I am able to put inside and she will kind of maneuver it side to side and just stick it out. Okay. So she will not, I have done, I've been successful and not always with some cream of wheat and scrambled eggs, but it's very rare when she does consume it. Well, she, but she's doing like baby food purees or she doesn't even want those. Yes. That's the funny thing. She'll do all the purees for baby food, Gerber, you name it, all the brands we've tried and she'll eat them well. Okay, go, yeah, that's great. And is it, are those, they all smooth textures? Do they have any textures or chunks in them? So I have tried to do some with the texture, which are like the bigger ones, size mm -hmm. kind of three or four. Uh, those she won't do. She will do the pouches, but those I noticed that they're still kind of creamy. So it's not like they have chunks or anything. It's just more like, I don't know, like, yogurt consistent so it, right. it still has some type of um not too pureed or liquid and she'll swallow it well okay. she loves it you can tell that she like enjoys it but she won't do nothing that is kind of solid or chunks okay well and actually um with baby food when you look at all those stages and you get to three and four and then you have chunks 
there's a, actually a problem with that. Same thing like I talked about the cups, the, the stages of foods that they do like that really don't move in the development that a baby's mouth does. Because think about a baby's like using puree and when you first start, they, they're sucking it off the spoon kind of that like they would from a, a cup or a bottle. And when mm -hmm. you try to do that with those stage three or fours, you have that liquidy with chunks in it, right? So you mm -hmm. go ahead and do that and you suck in a chunk and you're gonna mm -hmm. gag. So don't do not do stage three and four. You can just don't don't even think about those. I, I never did those with any of my three kids after I learned that. Sometimes they even put long pieces of noodles in them. And yeah. stuff. so it's like, do mm -hmm. I suck? Do I chew? Like that's, that's not the next thing um, after that. Do the purees come out of her mouth when you put it in with the spoon? Is she using her tongue to push those out too? No. Mm -mm. No, those are staying in. Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, so the next thing after like the purees like that is something we called meltable hard solid. So something that you would put in your mouth and she could like gum it, but it would dissolve on its own. Um, so the, it used to be Cheerios were a great option for that, but now they put the coating on it so that when you put it in milk, it doesn't mm -hmm. get soggy. So those mm -hmm. don't work as well as they used to. Um, but like those Gerber puffs are a great one to try. Have you tried those ones yet? I've tried that and she'll kind of look at me. She gives me like a stare, like she knows like it's dissolving, but mm -hmm. she immediately sticks it out. She gets it. Well, that's, she knows how to use her tongue then to get it. Back yeah. Um, yeah. And you can try putting it like, instead of in the front of her mouth, kind of put it on the side where we would chew it. Um, okay. So it could kind of stay in the pocket there a little bit. Cause those okay. are one thing, as long as it, they're always going to dissolve. So you can't hurt her with it. And it's much less likely to gag because it's going to dissolve mm -hmm. in her mouth okay. too. Um, Cause that might be part of the, the concern is that she's gets it in her mouth, but then her tongue doesn't know what to do. And so instead of being able to move it, because think about it, if we're going to eat something, I always think about a baby carrot, like a crunchy one is like the hardest thing you can eat. If you think about, but it really demonstrates how we, how we use our mouth to eat, but you'd like take a bite of that and it breaks up into all those tiny little pieces. And if you would swallow then once it broke up into tiny pieces, we would gag as an adult, right? Because it wouldn't mm -hmm. go where it needs to go. So then we use our tongue to go side to side and we scrape up all those little food particles and we bring them together and what they call a bowl. It's one big chunk of food and then we swallow it down. Um, so that's the skill that she's gonna need to learn is to be able to move her tongue around, to move the food from her gum to kind of gum it up and then back to the middle of her mouth and swallow it down. And that's uh, what is kind of tricky because I, it, it makes me feel like, oh my God, like, or either she's playing with me or she knows so much because she does know how to maneuver things side to side. Yeah. And I see her like just moving stuff. And uh, it might and be she, that, you know, she can do it, but not on command. You know, like I can move my tongue around, but not necessarily when I need to do when that. When I need it. Okay. Right, yes. Um, you know, like it, she has the ability to, but her brain telling her and coordinating it with the food is probably something that's really tricky. So you can do activities because we want to teach her how to move her tongue side to side. So you can use, um, if you, I, it's difficult. I can't just show you, but um, if you have a therapist, they can probably show you too. But really we want to train her, her tongue to go side to side. So you can take your finger and just cut, especially since she doesn't have teeth and you can mm -hmm. put it on the side of her mouth and like go along the side of her gum line there and let mm -hmm. her tongue follow you. And you kind of go down mm -hmm. like, like where her teeth would be, rub mm -hmm. on the top where your teeth are gonna come out and then come back out on the side of her gum. Then you do the same thing. You go down where her teeth would be and come out on the side of her gum and you do it really, really slow as long okay. as she's not gagging. Um, you know, you obviously <laughs> don't wanna make her gag. You know, some kids yeah. have a very sensitive gag reflex too. And that's something you have to watch out for because then things are gonna come out. But so then her tongue, is going to follow you when you do that but that's a great exercise okay that you okay. can do um to help her practice because without being able to have that coordinated moving of your tongue you're not going to be able to eat foods and, and i think that is one of her biggest struggle um because she does tend to still keep her tongue out yeah uh, so i've i've kind of seen as well uh some of those it looks like a tooth like a, a toothbrush mm -hmm. but they're like um like sensations 
uh, they got like different, it's like a yeah. little vibrator. Yeah. Yes. There's a Z vibe they're called and you can do yes. different exercises. You just want to make sure if you use the exercises, somebody shows you like one of your therapists shows it's, you what to okay. do with it. So you don't okay. do something that could hurt her. Um, I was going to say something. Oh, and when she is eating, like it's sucking from the pouch or you're putting the spoon in her mouth, does her tongue still hang out when she's doing those things too? Is it, or is so, it? Sometimes. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to show you something to do with the spoon. And this is great for everybody who has not done spoon stuff yet. And you'll know ahead of time. Um, I brought all of our spoons and I want to show you the difference between spoons because it makes a huge difference when you are feeding your child especially in the way beginning I'm just pulling out all the different kinds I have here um this is a spoon we see a lot you buy them you know just at Walmart Target and all that but I want to show you something it has a really really deep bowl in it right which is great because you can get a good amount of food on there but it is not good for a new eater's mouth because what we do, um, and it's the same mm -hmm. thing with um, when they're drinking from a bottle or even when you're breastfeeding, your tongue needs to be at the bottom of your mouth and nice and still and stable. And then we put the spoon or whatever on the tongue. And then the top of your mouth, your tongue goes, or the top of your mouth comes down and you kind of make like, especially in the very beginning, you're making a vacuum with the, the roof of your mouth and your tongue and you're tongue's going to hold that spoon still but when you have this big bowl like that they're not using their lips like we would to pull off the food so what ends up happening is as a parent we put it in our mouth and we go like and we scrape it off on their top lip well we didn't show them how to do anything there but dump the food in their mouth which can cause gagging and things like that so <laughs> when you're choosing your spoon hello sweetheart um you want spoons that have nice flat bowls this one's called a maroon spoon you can get them on amazon yeah, yeah something very flat and that one even look, might be even a little wide for her mouth um really that one is, okay. it's flat but um skinnier this one is one of those ones i bought it i like this one better than i like this one the bowl is much flatter but not still a little bit deep but this one i think i probably just got at walmart um but I like this one called a maroon spoon, or there's ones called an easy spoon that you can also buy on Amazon. And this one is super flat. And this flat. is what mm -hmm. I really, really flat. So you can only get a little bit, but you only need a little bit when they have a little mouth. But mm -hmm. the really, really important thing is when you are first feeding your child um, and also, um, you know, pediatricians typically recommend around six months of age to start feeding uh, purees and do something other than whatever kind of milk you're doing. But that's not always the case for our children because they might not have the right amount of head control, be able to sit up really well in their height chair. So sometimes it's later than that. And I know everybody's excited about giving their kid food for the first time. It's so exciting. But if we do it too soon, we can actually cause them to gag and them not want to want to have food. So, you know, we look for all those other things before we start it for the first time. Um, with Ren, um, I think I did about seven months and she seemed pretty good physically with it, but her tummy did not handle food well at all. Um, and stop going to the bathroom and all sorts of stuff. So I backed off for another two or three months and we tried again and it went much better. Um, so I, I really was excited about that. But, um, but when they are physically, you think they're ready to do it. You know, like I said, we all tend to put it in and just scrape it right off and let them do whatever. But what we want to do is you want to put it in their mouth. So say, here's their tongue, put it in their mouth, yeah. right down on it. And you give a little bit of downward pressure on their tongue. So their tongue stays back and in their mouth where we need it to be. And then you just wait, wait till they close their mouth and they're going to kind of suck it off the spoon like that versus doing all the scraping because we're not really teaching their mouth anything with that. Um, and if they're not ready for it to come into their mouth, they're probably going to gag. Um, and that's Indeed. what we want to avoid. <laughs> Do you recommend, I started with her, with, at least with like puree as well, when she was maybe nine, nine months, mm -hmm. 10 months, and she did, she did really good. Um, and she learned really quick, you know, once she saw a spoon, oh, she would, she would get so happy and she would start, yeah. and she'll start doing that. Yeah. Um, 
do you recommend those spoons that are kind of open in the middle and they kind of like absorb certain uh, oh. food continent for her to kind of pick it up and suck yeah, it? Yeah, I have some, yes. And it's okay for however, if she would want to do it herself, or them, whoever is feeding themselves and they want to hold it and put it in their mouth. This one has that too. That has that bumpy thing on the mm -hmm. bottom. Um, or I like these ones came off Amazon, I think too, real flat. And it, it has like those little holes in there. So the mm -hmm. food sticks in there. So if it would be in there, they just have to bring it to their mouth. However, they get it in their mouth is a okay because they're moving it around and doing it, which is great. Um, and the same thing too, with, um, with she can just have the spoon to play with when you're not even eating, because if she puts it in her mouth and gets it over here, her tongue's gonna go over there. So the more she's putting things in her mouth and toys, which is a totally normal part of development, all kids should do it. We want her to be able to put things in her mouth. So any teether that is kind of stick shaped is awesome. Um, okay. They make quite a few of them out there now when you look, or we talked about those vibrating ones too um, last time, but, um, and actually the other thing too, that's interesting, to know that when babies are born, their gag reflex, we all have it, right? If you stick your finger down your throat, you're gonna gag normal, right? That's protective so that if we get something back there that shouldn't be there, we would gag and it would come out and we'd be safe. Well, babies are born with it way more towards the middle of their tongue. And as they use toys to chew on and play with, they actually walk it back farther in their mouth. So when babies are missing that hand to mouth or putting their own hands in, I mean, kids jam their whole hand in there, they put their feet in their mouth, um, that actually is part of normal development that helps move their gag reflex from the middle of their tongue to the back part of your mouth mm. where it should be. So sometimes that gets delayed in our kids because the hand to mouth is delayed and being able to hold something and put it in their mouth happens later. So then that other stuff happens later, which therefore impacts their feeding that way too. So more toys you can have them play with and put in their mouth. Awesome. Definitely. That was her. She was okay. not one to explore with her mouth for no. a, a good good while I think maybe it was 12 13 months when she started kind of finding her toes bringing it to her mouth so so yeah she was delayed on, on that portion yeah so we just yeah. encourage all of you know all those things and put something in their hand you know that's safe and you know spoons are great because they're safe and they're long um, anything mm -hmm. like that or if you're feeding them they can have a spoon you can have a spoon so you do a bite, they put a you know, put it in their mouth and move it around like that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Any other questions about feeding or any, I mean, anything we talk about, but since we were on the feeding. Um, I'll talk just, I know we've kind of talked about this the last few weeks, but Quinn has been recently, um, since our last session, almost like a downward dog position, but mm -hmm. spread. So, but that's all she can get. You know what I mean? She can't pull herself up from that. Like what's the next logical, what should we be doing? You know, if I put my arms out, she'll kind of grab a hold because like I'm holding her elbows and then she'll stand up and she'll get so excited. But again, legs are super spread out. At spread the point. Uh, yeah, I just had this conversation with another group of moms that I just know that that and that's really common for our guys to do the splits mm -hmm. and then pull themselves up. Does, do you have like one of those little music table ones, you know, like those activity ones that, you know, they have four legs and, yeah. you know, it's only about this. Tall. That's a really good one to okay. pull up. And it's typically they're so short that it, it does usually work okay. um, with our guys. Um, that would be a really good toy to use. Um, but you probably want to do a, still a lot of hands and knees stuff when you're in okay. that position to keep the legs from going out like that. Mm -hmm. So like crawling over things is great. You know, make a little, um, you could take a couch cushion down and put it on the floor and put yep. something that she really wants on the other side. So she's in, you can even like grade it and put like two or whatever. So you have to kind of pull up on your legs but you still have the support of your arms to kind of pull you over, but that's a great way to practice pushing up on your legs okay. um, and go over piles of different things, pillows, you know, something from the bed. You can even take like um, your blank, your blanket from your bed and ball it mm -hmm. up, something like that um, is great. The more you climb over things like that, you have to use your legs for that too. Sounds good. 
How I forget how old did you say she was? She is 11 months. 11 months now. Yep. She will be a year next month. <laughs> oh, wow. Mine's going to be four next month. I can't believe that one. Oh, it's going way too fast. How's your little baby doing? Ours? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, he's just crying. So we can, so oh, that's all. Awesome. <laughs> um, going okay? Yeah, he's doing good. <laughs> he's only uh, two months. And then not so far, he's very healthy. Oh, he's so oh. sweet. Oh, I'm not happy. Oh, no. No, I'm not happy right now. <laughs> But yeah, he is, um, he's doing better. I mean, the beginning he was um, sleeping, he, he was, he's premature by three weeks. Mm -hmm. So he was mostly sleeping. So we had to keep on waking him up yeah. um, for him to feed. And then after those three weeks, he started to pick up and now he's, he's doing uh, very good with the breastfeeding and all that. So oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing you can do for him is breastfeeding. That's going to teach lots and lots of different skills in his mouth for sure. Uh, he has his, uh, his days, but most right. of the time he's, he, he does better. I mean, the uh, reflux sometimes kicks in and it doesn't help, uh, but he's, he's doing good. He's doing good now. Awesome. Glad to hear it. I guess right now we don't have a lot of questions. So we joined uh, mostly for for hearing out uh, experiences and all that because I mean two months old, still still too young for for. Um, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. You're just start. Yep. You're just starting out with her, and you're just trying to get through day to day. At two yeah, months, exactly. I was didn't know if I was awake or asleep or you know what I did the day before at that point. Um, yep. We're still yeah. in the phase of uh, feeding, sleep, diaper, repeat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my, I had to wake my daughter up in the week. She was six weeks early um, and I had to wake her up wow. round the clock for a long time. Um, even when she wanted to sleep through the night and I was like, I want to sleep too, uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, and then she turned into an excellent sleeper and then they get teeth and then they stop sleeping again. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, and that's one thing I felt like um, nobody told me um, that and I wasn't really aware till it was happening. Like Christy said, it took a long time to get that first tooth, um, and it takes. That seemed like when the teeth were coming in, they took forever to come in. So like two or three would be coming in at a time because um, she slept really well till about ten months of age, and that's when she started to get her first tooth. And forget it, it took forever. And I've always felt like she was teething for uh, like a year or more after that. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, but the other thing to know about teething, um, and it's not just specific to our kids, but um, one of the ways that we make teeth erupt and come out, so like if they're right up below the surface, is actually by chewing. So mm -hmm. that if you have a tooth that, you know, they're, they're slow to come, like we just talked about, to use teethers and things that they can chew on, that motion actually helps the tooth work its way up to the skin. So if, it's, you know, another reason to use teethers or something that, you know, put toys in your mouth that are appropriate, because um, that will help your teeth um, come out too. I thought you were going to give me some hope uh, in oh. regards to if they, if one pops out, all of them come out all together, but yeah. that that's not the case, huh? No, no. And some, I mean, <laughs> I've heard a lot of, and it did happen to Ren too, you know, there's, usually a pretty common order that the teeth come in but not necessarily with down syndrome they can come in like really random order mm -hmm. and things like that too um it might not and even like the molars can be delayed coming in um with it um i was at, i i know somebody else um and the dad is a dentist and they have a much older child with Down syndrome. Um, and they were very surprised that Ren even had her teeth in when they did. I was like, oh no, she's got them all in. They're like, what? So, it, you know, it's a normal thing for them to kind of be slow with that. But I, yeah, I'm waiting, I guess soon enough, we'll get some more molars in her house too. Um, and I think uh, my husband took Ren to the dentist the last time and she's actually just missing a whole tooth in there. And they said, that's not uncommon either. 
sometimes they don't come in very straight or they can um, be really pointy and like jagged teeth, all that um, is not uncommon with Down syndrome. All things that can be easily taken care of, but um, things that can go with that. But that, oh, and you know, Christy, the other thing I wanted to say too is that all these first foods that you feed, um, you don't need teeth for, you know, like, so not having teeth should not be something that um, stops you from giving your child food. It's way more about how your mouth, your tongue moves. So it puts the food in the right place so they can mash it up with their gums. But you don't need to worry about not having teeth. Um, you can eat anything, you know, all veggies that are soft, fruits, you can do all of that without actually having teeth in there. Um, it's, it's about how your, your tongue and your mouth move together, not not the actual teeth. You might not want to be doing like a steak or something like that, but right. Um, but all the other foods, um, you're, as long as she's safe with it, you're safe to do that. I was trying to think of other things with Ren that, with feeding that I found that was different than my other children, but not real. And, and Christy, like you said, not wanting to touch things. So I meant to ask, will she touch the puree food? Will she play in the, like if you're doing, you know, will she get her hands messy with that? Uh, yeah, sometimes she wants to kind of touch it. Um, I don't know, like I've tried bananas. Bananas is a big no-no for her. So I don't know if it's the consistency or the sliminess of it. She does not like. Uh, she does well, do, does well with watermelon. Uh, that we've tried and she loves it and she can eat like a whole square. Yeah. Obviously we're holding it. Right. Uh, I don't know if she's just lazy and it's just used to us. It wasn't until like a month ago that she started holding her bottle. Nope. So, and it's not because she is weak because she can throw things like we, right. we know that she has the strength. Um, it's just mainly, I don't know if she just doesn't want to do it. So it's well, hard to, yeah. to really and, you know, tell. Bananas are a tricky one because they are slimy and they slip really easily, not only mm -hmm. in your fingers, but also in your mouth. So mm -hmm. even though they're a nice soft food, if you offer them in little pieces, they slide around really easy. But watermelon has that nice bite to it and doesn't slide around in your mouth like that. So um, that definitely might be a difference between the two of those um, with that. I would keep trying some of those meltable ones that we we're talking about, but also play, play in, um, in, in the food. Like that's another big thing too is, you know, I hate cleaning. I'm so glad we're moving past this. I hate cleaning Ren up, but I have so many pictures of her covered in avocado, whatever. Getting mm -hmm. food all over you is a normal part of development too. Like that is, you, you need to be able, because you learn how to get it in your mouth. You learn what it feels like. You should get dirty. We want kids to get dirty. So as parents who do not want to mess, we just have to like, you know, hold our hands down and let them get messy. You know, mm -hmm. if they get puree on their tray, let them get it everywhere and give them a bath after. Um, because that you need to be able to tolerate touching and feeling everything. Because if you don't want to feel it with your hands, chances are you're not going to put it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. more mess you can make, great. It's going to be warm outside now. Go outside, do it and hold <laughs> it down after or something, right? Um, but that is a really, really important part. And we have seen just in the general population, a lot more picky eaters. And there's a lot more of, um, especially now when we have these pouches and all these things, which are great. And I use them all the time too, but that really cuts back on the mess factor. Um, and kids are lose a little bit of something with that too. Um, I see a lot more kids just in general that don't like to be messy. So get messy. Um, and if the other thing too, that I learned a long time ago is that if your child doesn't like to get messy, and they do a little bit, but then you go wash them up in their high chair. They probably, a lot of kids don't like to be wiped, no, right? And my friend still, you know, fusses at me when I do that. So if you had a really great meal time, don't end it by them screaming because you're wiping their hands and yeah. their face in their high chair. Pick them mm -hmm. up, take them somewhere different, sit them on the edge of the counter, you know, wherever, clean them up there so they're not associating that bad reaction with the high chair mm. because kids are excellent 
at remembering things. And if they have a bad experience or something, they put the two and two together. So, you know, we want to keep it all pleasant and happy um, with it and not that. But most kids do not like to be wiped up, you know, that they fuss at that. Um, so keep the two separate if that's something that bothers them. Okay. That's something I've, I've tried kind of this last month to really do because I'm like so worried she'll be two months and it's like I'm still like out with purees um, and that's okay and you want to take it slow because the you know mm -hmm. you definitely don't want to do something she's not ready for yeah. and cause her to gag or whatever because that's going to be so much harder to fix than if you just go slow and at her pace um, as long as she's getting all the nutrition she needs don't worry about it um, and really just like I said, those meltable ones. And if you go to the grocery store, you and you read the back, you'll be able to read and see which ones that if you take a bite and it melts. And I always, you know, put it in your mouth first too before you feed it to your child. Put it in your mouth, close your eyes, and feel what does the food do within your in your mouth, and that gives you an idea what's going to happen to mm -hmm. them because they do melt, make melt more meltable ones um, that she can hold too. So that would be, let her place it in her mouth herself and take a bite. Um, uh, Gerber makes some, I don't remember what they're called because most of them have some kind of dairy in it and Ren can't do that. It hurts her tummy, but little, they look like cheese puffs, but they're like spinach mm -hmm. and things like that. Those are great ones because she can hold it and move it around her mouth too. Uh, or you can do the same since she likes you to hold the watermelon and she takes a bite. You can hold it on the side of her mouth and let her take a bite. Um, <laughs> I've, I've done that as well. And once she feels that it gets kind of gummy, Mm -hmm. she'll literally kind of like poof, just throws okay. it <laughs> that would be so, she probably doesn't like some texture stuff and related to food so just play let her play with the food and, okay you know you end up you do end up wasting food when you do that but I mean how much food do kids throw on the floor anyway when they're eating it's it's gonna happen um mm -hmm. with it and just let her explore 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 yeah so it and it's okay make a mess <laughs> Mommy's sharing all your secrets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it, it's it's definitely been interesting with her and 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 yes, I was a clean mom <laughs> that did not want it to make any mess with my older son. And with her, it's like, oh, let her just do it. <laughs> So that she can kind of feel and 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 have fun and and really know texture, right? And the only thing right now, I mean, with it's an older kid who doesn't put things in the mouth. We would explore with other textures, but at this age, the safe thing to explore with is food, right? You know, we certainly mm -hmm. wouldn't do shaving cream or anything, but you can do applesauce or whatever uh, because we want it to go into her mouth. So anything that you can explore that way is great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay. thank you. I do You're appreciate welcome. all your no inputs and in food. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions, Fred? I think we're already at time. These half an hour sessions go by so fast. I was like off doing my own thing for a second, like kind of looking at my computer and I was like, oh, it's 827 already. When did that happen? <clears throat> all right. Well, think about anything else for our last one. Next one. And I'm happy to answer some more questions. Thanks so much for coming, everyone. It was good to see all of your faces. And of course, we love seeing the baby's faces. Not that you all aren't wonderful, but <laughs> I mean, <listen. laughs> next like, week, I'll nice. have to bring bring Ren in the end so you can all meet her. Um, yes. And see, she's a, she's a handful now going to be four. Um, very funny. Her, her new thing this week is she would do like, okay, or something. Like, but now it's, yeah, mommy, mommy, really like real emphatically. She just started week so it's fun <laughs> all right uh, well hey, marissa, have a good night everybody oh go ahead. marissa we received your message but we were unable to reply to it okay so no problem. okay just shoot me an email so that way i have your email address do you have do you have your email okay i don't think we have your email sorry <laughs> it's okay it, um if you guys are i just want to make sure that you're getting the emails for me when i send out the zoom links so if you can go on our website and just make sure you register you should be getting them for me. Uh, she, yeah, she's, just her, she, she's not getting the email. So maybe. Okay, yeah. yeah. If you go on our Facebook page or the Gigi's Facebook page, 
Okay. Um, and you just look for the post about this event. It's just the, the motor skills um, banner with ours and Gigi's logo. Um, you click on that link. It's free to register. Just um, fill in your information. That way you can get the emails from me so you guys don't miss anything. Got it. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. Thank you, you too. Bye.